The mountains outside of Seattle accumulate a lot of snow. This snowpack, all this frozen water, has been used by the city of Seattle for over a century as a source of stored energy. As the snow melts, gravity takes over and the water makes its way to the streams and rivers that feed the Puget Sound. Starting early in the 20th century, Seattle City Light began building dams that would harness the energy of this water speeding toward the sound. Inside the dams are turbines that are spun by this rushing water. People have been using water to power things for centuries. Now this is an example of a 19th century water wheel that they used to use to generate electricity a long time ago. In the 21st century, we're still using water to power things, but instead of a wooden wheel, we're using metal turbines because they last longer and they create far more energy. Here's how they work. Water is stored behind a dam. To generate power, the water is directed through tunnels called penstocks. The penstocks bring the water to the powerhouse turbines. At the turbine, veins called wicket gates control the water's energy and direct the water into the turbine runner's blades, causing the turbine to spin a shaft connected to a series of large magnets in the generator. These magnets are spun inside large coils of copper wire, generating electricity. This electricity is transferred from the generator to transformers, which dramatically increase the voltage and allow the electricity to be sent hundreds of miles to Seattle over transmission lines. Gorge Powerhouse on the Skagit River was one of the very first built by Seattle City Light and has been generating electricity since the 1920s. Every few decades though, the turbines have to be replaced because they get worn down and don't generate electricity as efficiently. That's what they've been doing recently at the Gorge Powerhouse. They're replacing what they call Generator 24. This particular one happens to be a complete turbine overhaul where the generator had been built in the early 1950s, hasn't been touched hardly at all to 2006, and needs a complete overhaul. While it takes an immense amount of work to do this, the efficiency of the turbine will increase greatly. We're upgrading the machine from an 80 watt machine probably all the way up to a 100 megawatt machine, which is a huge improvement in 50 years. Technology and the building of the turbine wheels has increased so much. Seattle City Light has been upgrading all its turbines at a cost of $64 million. But the utility will make back $112 million in increased power production over the life of the new turbines. So it's a good investment. Doing the work is both technical and time consuming. Some workers even have to wear these moon suits with an independent air supply to do the modern upgrades. And there's another tool used here that also looks like something you'd see from astronaut training. Seattle City Light workers created it. It's actually called a boring bar. And what that operation is for is to machine uh, the existing surfaces in the uh, turbine area for, to accommodate some of the new parts that we're going to be putting in the, into Unit 24. What's interesting is that the utility put the turbine overhaul out for bid, and Seattle City Light workers won the contract. We came out about a half million dollars lower than the next lowest competitor. That was competing throughout the world, even as far as China had bid on it. So uh, all the equipment that we have at the shop that uh, we've collected through the years has allowed us to compete with the outside world. City Light workers have been caring for these turbines on these hydro systems for a long time. So they've accumulated very specialized machining tools for nearly a century. Uh, a lot of the parts were made back in the early 20s and no longer available. So we will reverse engineer what's broken and upgrade it and make it to today's standards in our shop. We have all the equipment and the tooling to do that and the manpower to do it. So the city's long experience with hydro generation is now saving ratepayers quite a bit of money. And these turbines are keeping the lights on using only snow melt and gravity to do it. In addition, these hydro projects were built above traditional salmon spawning grounds. So they're also environmentally friendly. Seattle citizens completed their first hydro project on the Cedar River in eastern King County all the way back in 1905. And that powerhouse is still in operation.